Hi, this is Andrew Twidwell, owner of ABT Plumbing, Electric, Heat, and Air. Once again, with the show, you got this. It's a show of DIY do's and don'ts. And I am zooming in with Rosalie Brown. I'm in my home office. She's in her home office. Hi, Rosalie. I've Hi, been Andrew. finding myself at my home office a lot more. I'm kind of liking this this remote work thing. So I, I got to admit, um, I get a lot more done at my house than I do when I'm in the office. I was in the office for the past two days, and yeah, it was a... Um, um, I think I got a lot done, but all the travel, all the drive time and all that stuff, I kind of, you know, I, I lose a little bit when, you know, we, we opened up the office in Auburn and uh, it's an hour drive for me now. So, yeah, half an hour drive, 45 minutes, depending on traffic. But anyway, I like this remote stuff. How are things with you, Rosalie? Good. It's um, maybe spring. Maybe. I guess techni- <laughs> okay, so we're recording this on the tw- 20th and I think yesterday. Was actually the first official yeah, uh, day of spring. Yesterday. But you reminded me of that. Yeah. And yeah, it and feels like spring because I woke does. up and I was hot. I was hot. Yeah, I was warm. like, it's been in the 60s, mid 60s all every day. And I'm hope, getting close to the 70s. But we are looking at some weather. This will be airing on Friday and 40 chance right now, 40% chance of rain on Friday, 60% on Sunday, Saturday, and 40% on on Sunday and then Tuesday and Wednesday, they're talking about possibilities. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, um, you know, it's that time of year, right? If you don't like the weather, wait till tomorrow kind of weather. Yeah. If well, you don't like it warm. Yeah. It's okay. Cool so you, this. you can appreciate this because, um, spending time in Minnesota and yeah. me spending time in Detroit. Um, there's that whole saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And, yeah. So it's not quite as drastic here, but it is it is it still in that it could be cold today, it could be hot today. So yeah, um, yeah. interesting to drop like ten degrees up by Friday is what they're saying right now. And thirty seven thirty seven degrees in, in Grass Valley this weekend for a for oh low. My goodness. There'll be snow in so, the mountain for sure. So that kind of um the, it's funny because you, you know, you happen to be a heating and cooling guy, not just a plumber. And yeah. so if I were to, um, it's kind of that time of year where don't you think like it makes good sense to go ahead and like schedule that checkup right now? Because yes. if you're not using your AC yet, you're going to be soon, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. We were just talking about that, right? I mean, you're, you woke up and it was warm in LA and you're like, man, it's the time to turn the AC on. So we're it's getting pretty close. Point. And it, at the very least, at the very least, test your AC right now. <laughs> Just make sure it works. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the minimum to do, right? Because you don't want to wait till the day that you actually need it. Um, but ideally, every all manufacturers um, recommend that you get an inspection by a licensed contractor on a yearly basis of both your um, heating and cooling system. We do both of those on one visit, so save some time, so you don't have to have us come out every six months. We come out once a year, and we do both the plot. We do both the uh, the air conditioning and the heating in one time um so it saves you money saves you time um you can reach us out well we'll just give you the phone number right now 530-230-9092 530-230-9092 and that we charge yeah we still got a, a crazy deal actually we're doing a crazier deal because it's spring um we've dropped it down to 29 bucks so um if the dollar amount was holding you back um that's only 29 dollars i mean heck, it's crazy not to just have that done um, and then you'll have some peace of mind coming into the season and know that your air conditioning is actually going to work because um, there are, are some minor things that can make it so it doesn't work. And if we see it, we'll make the recommendations of what needs to be done. Um, at the very least, um, you know, you'll know that your system is going to be working. So. Well, that that's what I was going to say, because, um, you know, sometimes when we talk to customers, they don't, you know, maybe they moved in and they haven't paid much attention. The equipment's been working fine. Maybe they know it's a, um, a mana or a mana, but they don't know much else, whatever. Okay. The cool thing about these um, these visits with our technicians, right, is that you find out about everything, right? They do a quick right. rundown of what your system is, what the recommendations are. Here's the level you're looking at, that kind of stuff. So really kind of also helps you to get more familiar with their your equipment and also just to have that peace of mind like you said um if you can kind of do the maintenance now you can probably prevent hopefully you know something big and especially during a heat wave because we know that 
especially in like Nevada County, I can't speak to Placer, but in Nevada County, once that first band of really hot weather hits, no HVAC company in town can get, I mean, the appointments are waitless, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's true in Placer as well in Sacramento, We, you know, because no one builds a team to handle the heavy, this one or two or three or four or a week worth of work, right? So, yeah, we maintain, I mean, we've got three technicians right now on the, on the HVAC side. So, um, you know, when it gets, when we're getting slammed and we're getting, the guys are getting five, six, seven, eight calls a day, that's all they can handle. Um, and yeah, people go on the wait list and it could be days before you get it. And we won't be the only ones. Everybody's just in the same boat. All the contractors are in the same boat. So yeah, it's definitely a good idea. And a lot of times, you know, we'll catch those minor little things. And like you pointed out, it's the catastrophic thing that we're trying to, um, to avoid, right? I mean, who doesn't take their car in to get a tune-up? Who doesn't take their car to go go get an oil change? All you're doing with that is to to avoid a catastrophic failure, so you're not broken down on the side of the road. Same thing goes true with your home, right? If you're not maintaining it, um, you're it's a, a disaster just waiting. It's not if, but when that thing's going to break down. So um, you want to avoid those catastrophic times, and especially especially during a time when everybody's so busy that they that you're going to have to wait days, sometimes weeks. Um, not to mention the fact that during those times, it can be difficult to get parts. So, you know, we're still we're, we're at the tail end of the COVID um, uh, supply demand issue, um, but it's still there. We're still having some issues, and especially with all the stuff that's going on in China, um, some of those parts can be difficult to get. And if you're in, if we're in a situation where um, everybody's having that same problem and we're trying to get that one part and it can be difficult to get the part. So you could be waiting weeks. So, yeah, get it done now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now I'm, vegan. that was good. <laughs> well, it is what I do. Um, okay. So really quickly, I just wanted to say, as we segue into the plumbing side of business, um, one, the reason I think we're focusing on plumbing right now is because there's so many questions people have when I talk to them about, they just like you, so much of your life, you're surrounded by plumbing appliances, believe it or not. And so yeah. there's a lot of questions about different, right. But what I thought was fascinating is that this week i don't know if i'm gonna be able to say it correctly this week is officially considered and i read this somewhere i could be making it up but fix a leak week is that what it is well done you did it i did it <laughs> i had to picture each word in my mind as i said it so fix a fix a leak we're gonna try to give you some information about how not to necessarily just fix a leak but like, for instance, Andrew, you're the plumber here. How how can I prevent water damage? It's huge. And yeah, we were just going over that with our technicians yesterday in ways to describe what water damage looks like. So one thing, I, I'm, I'm a big um, proponent of trying to paint pictures, right? So a water leak can be pretty catastrophic. So if you ever if you've ever dropped a gallon of milk on the ground or even just a quart of milk on the ground, and what a huge mess that makes, right? I mean, you're talking about only about a quart or a gallon, and you've got a puddle that's a good two to three feet in diameter. Now think about plumbing, where you've got a continuous supply of water. If a half-inch water line breaks, that thing will produce eight to 10 gallons per minute. So multiply that by eight or 10 times every single minute, and how long does it take you to get to the, to the valve where you can actually turn that water off? Um, so one of the questions, I mean, this is how do you prevent water damage, right? So one of the key things, and this is something that's starting to happen right now. We just got um, called out by, we're having some meetings with some of our insurance, our local insurance agents, because I know Farmers is mandating for new homeowners insurance, you have to have a um, wa automatic water shutoff. So a leak detector and an automatic water shutoff. And the reason they're doing that is because their water damage is one of the, the most expensive claims they have. And it, it is leading in, it, more than fire, more than anything else, more than weather related issues, more than forest fires is water damage is one of their leading costs for an insurance company. So they're mandating that you have to have these automatic water shutoffs installed. So you can kind of get a fret at the curve if you've got homeowners insurance, if you own the home, um, and just have one of these things installed. And all it is, is it's a solenoid valve that we put on the water main and we put sensors around the house that detect whether or not there's some flow of water. They also make some that automatically just know if there's a, a large volume of water that goes through. 
um, and will shut the water off. So it's it's kind of it's autonomous. It works on its own. It's one of those things that you'll you'll set it up and you kind of forget about it. Um, but they're a great device, and I've been in, installing them for gosh. I remember when the first ones came out in the late 80s, early 90s, and we were pushing them and truly really trying to get people to understand how, what a benefit they were, but we were trying to educate our customers on it. So we never really got very far in selling them. Um, now with the insurance companies mandating them, I think we're going to have a bunch, they'll get more traction because they're, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. They're just a simple little device. They're not terribly expensive. Um, I think the devices themselves are under a grand and I think installs under a grand. So I mean, it's not, it's not huge. and most of you know, homeowners insurance companies have it set up so that um, you will actually save money um, installing these. So they'll pay themselves back. They'll pay for it within a year or two on premium savings. But I know like um, I was just talking to a friend that bought a place in uh, Windsor in Son Sonoma County. We just had dinner with them. And um, to get insurance, they had to put one of these things in. They just bought a house and they have to put it in. So they're mandating people to install them. So it's not even necessarily a, a choice they can actually make. So that is one way, a really good way to avoid water damage. Another way is just look around your house and see if there's any potential for water um, damage by, you know, look at your water heater. See if you've got any calcification or any kind of copper um, signs. Look at the water lines underneath your house and see if you've got any, um, again, rust or calcification on the pipes. Any, if you've got green on the outside of the pipe, that's more than likely a, some kind of leak that is corroded and clo has sealed the pipe. Rust and corrosion is not what we want to be sealing a pipe because it's not a matter of if, but when that thing blows. So that should be fixed. Another thing that you want to really check is surprisingly, washing machine hoses are the number one reason why we have floods inside of people's homes. Those little rubber r rubber water washer machine hoses that everybody installs, they're cheap. They say right on them not to be left under pressure. So technically, you're supposed to turn the water off to those every time you use your washing washing machine. No one does that. So it's left on there. And they also have a life expectancy. They have a state stamp on it, replace after five years. So not only are you supposed to turn the water off, but you're supposed to replace them every five years. So not many people do that. Um, there are stainless braided stainless steel washing machine hoses that are designed to be left under pressure. Highly recommend putting those in. So that's an easy DIY thing. Those are, I think they're like $25 each or something. So they're not cheap, but, you know, in terms of what is your deductible on your homeowner's insurance, and this is the number one thing that causes leaks inside of people's homes, and it's changing garden hoses, essentially. Can you change a garden hose? Other than moving the washing machine, that's the hardest part, but, you know, we're installing them. That's a huge one. You'll save so much money, and I can't tell you how many houses I've been out on that I've seen this happen. Um, and since we're talking about washers and dryers, another one of the, I, I've got a, my cousin's a fireman in San Francisco, number one cause of fires is lint in dryers. So sure. if you haven't taken lint out of your dryer vent, um, you should do that while you're at it as well. So uh, it always yeah. surprises, it always surprises me how people don't do that. You know, I have communal um, dryers that I use now and right. um, I'm always shocked. Yeah, out of the trap, right? <laughs> Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like they don't even, I'm like, who raised you? Were you raised yeah. in a barn? Because like, yeah. that was one of the first things like I learned as a kid when I started doing my own stuff was like, that was a fire hazard. And so I still yeah. think about that, but people just, you know, I'm like, this, this affects my life. Can you start checking the, the lint traps? Um, yeah. And I'm, I've got a good story on this one. Cause again, to pick, paint a picture, I've worked in houses that the dryer vent will be just run to the under the house and not to the outside of the house. So not vented, not vented properly. And then I remember one time I was probably about 25 or something and I was working in a crawl space and I had that situation and I was soldering a pipe and I lit the lint on fire and it was oh like a grass fire. It just, yep. Wow. And by the time I could figure out what was going on, um, it put itself out, but oh my God, I am underneath the house. I was a good five or 10 minute crawl under there. It was going to take me a long time to get out of that little hole way on the other side. And I was almost let the house on fire and because mm. of an in, improperly installed dryer vent. So it's, that was, it's it, it, that That's was one of the first, by the way, I didn't learn that, on the first one. <laughs> I finally learned on the second time. I don't saw it around that anymore. Well, that was um, one of the first things that we did when we bought the house in Detroit is um, it didn't have venting. 
And um, yeah. the house was, you know, a hundred years old. And I know that people had had a washer and dryer in the house and right. they didn't have it vented. So we actually had to do the whole, like through the brick and all that good stuff. Right. Um, and we did though, cause that was one thing we were like, okay, no fire. Um, yeah. But it's, it's yeah. crazy to think. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. I, I was terrified. I thought I was going to die, but anyway. Well, All you, right, you probably, you probably escaped it a few times, but um, okay. So back to, well, back to Fleming. Back I was to Fleming. Okay. He was riding in the back of pickup trucks. Right. I, I think about that <laughs> too. I think about yeah. the bouncing ball in the back of my dad's 77 yeah. Chevy Silverado with no, you know, top on it. Like I numbers. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, wow. Okay. All right. So in the horrible event that you have a pipe that burst, what are you going to do with a burst pipe? So I'm going to set this up to before this happens. Everybody write this down. Go and find where your water shutoff is, where the water main shutoff is in for your house. If you don't know where that is, Stop listening to this show. Go outside and figure it out. Find that water shut off. Again, it's not a matter of if, but when a water line will break because it's going to happen. It may not happen in your lifetime, but eventually that water line is going to burst, right? Hopefully it doesn't happen in your lifetime. But if you don't know where your water shut off is, figure that out. So what should you do? As soon as you notice water line sh a water line burst, shut the water off immediately. Um, once you've shut off the water, it's not a bad idea if you've got major water damage to shut off the power because you want to avoid um, shocking yourself because now all of a sudden you're you're really you've just made a really good path for electricity to find its way to ground, right? So um, and then call your plumber out and call us out and we'll come out and take care of the plumbing problem. If there is water damage, we've got companies that that w that we work with that will come out and take care of the water damage. And you need to take care of water damage within 24 hours. Um, it's shocking how fast mold grows. If you allow that water to sit for more than 12 hours, um, mold will start growing. 24 hours is too late. It has already gotten to the drywall and all the drywall will have to be replaced that got damp. All the carpet will have to be replaced. All the furniture, anything that that water touches goes into a dumpster. It's non-salvageable. So it's, it happens fast. And I've got a cup. I have a couple friends that own water restoration companies, and they tell me these horror stories of people that you know came home from vacation only to find their house had had, had some water damage, and it would have been there for like a week. And they literally have to gut the entire house, fifty, sixty-five inch TVs into the dumpster, antiques into the dumpster, because of the fact that the mold starts to grow on it and it can't be salvaged. I mean, it can be salvaged, but as terms of a company, they can't take the liability of, of returning into the home. So it, it has to go into the dumpster because of the, the mold issue and how it can uh, potentially make you sick and potentially kill you, right? So um, it's a big, big deal. And that's why water does is one of the most expensive claims that insurance companies have to pay out. It's because the water does damage really fast and then the mold growing does it just wipes everything out, everything. Yeah, I have friends in um, Florida who went through a couple hurricanes and the I think the most recent hurricane, I don't even know, know if it's the most recent. What am I thinking? Um, <laughs> recently, within my memory, um, in the last 18 months, 24 months, um, their home was actually, um, the roof stayed, but yeah. the water crept in. And right. it wasn't like you see on TV where it's like, they. if you lived in Florida, you probably wouldn't consider this a horrible disaster. It kind of was because the water got in and um, it it was in there long enough that they had to replace. Um, they were able to salvage. Like they basically have like sheetrock, you know, like when they were working on fixing the house, right? Um, they only had to do like half or one third right. you, down you to the floor. Like four feet. Yeah. 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 Um, the and then I have a the sheetrock. Yeah. Yes. And then I had another There's friend who they had. Like they had to do a full house redo, like full, like full house. And I'm like, if you had the money to redo your house, do you not have the money to move away from places that have hurricanes? But that's a whole nother, you know, right. that's right. a choice. Yeah, that's a choice. You need during the time that they're working on it. I mean, I had a friend that uh, their kid, they had a water leak in their kitchen while they were on vacation and they were displaced for, I think it was close to a year by the time it's they, were, nuts. they were taken care of. It was huge. Yeah, I think I would, 
I think I'd, I think I'd relocate, but that's me. It's easy to say when you live in California, yeah. right? It's easy to say that. Um, okay. So we should probably get to a couple more of these that aren't so dramatic. Um, I feel like I know how to handle this, um, run screaming from the house, but what should I do when my toilet overflows? <laughs> Bye. <Someone else>. Run. <laughs> yeah. Move out. Uh, so when a toilet starts to, when you have a clogged toilet and you flush the toilet and the water rises, one of the things that a lot of people do that they shouldn't is they try flushing it again. And all you're doing is filling that, that vessel of water. Essentially, you know, there's nowhere for that water to go except up. So it starts to fill the toilet up and then eventually it'll overflow. So as long as you don't do that second flush, all toilets now flush with a gallon and a half or less. One point, actually a little bit more, 1.6 gallons or less. Um, it's not enough to fill the bowl, but the second one, that's enough to fill the bowl and it will overflow. So that's the first thing. So if you do, if the water does start to rise up and you have hit that plunge, you have hit the, the toilet lever and forgot that you weren't supposed to do that, pull the tank lid off, the thing that has all the plumbing inside of it. And then there's the flapper mechanism push down on that and close that valve. That's the only thing that's letting water in and then shut the water off because that that valve will allow a little bit of water in, but the majority of the water comes from our flapper. Um, the way a toilet works is the water comes into the toilet, fills the tank slowly, right? You can hear the water filling up that tank over a period of 30 seconds or whatever. And then when we push, when we flip the lever, a big valve opens up. It's called the, the flush valve, and it's anywhere from two to three inches in diameter. And then all that water rushes out really quickly. So if I can shut that off, I'm going to avoid having a, an overflow. And if you have had an overflow, get that water up off the ground as soon as possible. Okay. Now, maybe the last one, because I'm looking at the time here. Um, yeah. This is related. What should I do when my toilet runs until I jiggle the handle? You know what I'm trying to say. Like it's, yeah, you totally. got to jiggle, jiggle. Yeah, yeah, jiggle the handle. I, I, I know, you know, fortunately my wife, well, unfortunately my wife married a plumber. So our husband does that every once in a while. Um, and I haven't fixed it. Um, what that is, is it usually is a chain that gets stuck that holds the, the flapper, um, that valve we were just talking about and gets stuck or the handle gets stuck open. So um, by jiggling, all you're doing is resetting that flapper. So um, the best thing to do is replace the flapper with one that doesn't have a metal chain or look at where that chain is hooking up. So open, pull the, le the toilet, toilet lid off, take a look and see what's going on. Sometimes it is a matter of the, the handles adjusted too far up and holds the valve open. Um, so you just kind of get a look in there and see what, see what's going on. And usually it's a pretty simple fix. So um, yeah, it's not terrible. That's annoying. Okay. Well, we, I think we, I think we hit all we can cover today on this show. Yeah. We can hit the so other ones. We, we if you want to bring us home. Yeah. So I did. if you need plumbing, electrical, heading, and air service, you can reach us at 530 230 9092. And never again, I'll say it a little slower this time 530 230 9092. You can also find us on the web at abtplumbing.com. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, YouTube, all the socials. Um, also, we still have these crazy deals. We're actually lowering all the deals on all of our services right now for a spring special. Twenty nine dollars gets you. You mentioned this ad. We will do a, a, a tune up, HVA tune up, tune up that includes the furnace and a air conditioning for twenty nine bucks. We'll do a water heater safety inspection and water and flush and a plumbing inspection for twenty nine dollars. One of the most important ones is a $29 electrical inspection, safety inspection, because when was the last time you had your electrical system looked at? And then the $97 drain cleaning, if we can't clear the drain, it's free. So that's for a residence, a homeowner with an accessible clean out. Give us a call at 530-230-9092. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. Bye.